Guys, so before I get started with the video, I need to sincerely apologize. I just finished recording and then realized I never plugged in my microphone. So for the next however long the video is going to be, it's all just recorded off of my phone's mic. I forgot to plug in this mic right here. So it's probably, I mean, you'll be able to hear it, but it's probably not going to sound the best. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize until the very, very end. The best way to avoid a mistake is to make that mistake once and you'll probably never do it again. And I guarantee I'll never do it again. So just for the rest of this video, uh, it's going to sound not super great, but um, I am very, very sorry. And I hope you still enjoy. What's up guys, it's Bumpkins. Today is Wednesday, June 15th. Wednesday means new comic book day. New comic book day means new comic book haul video. As always, I went down to Infinity Flux here in Chattanooga, Tennessee for another big old stack of books and a few extra goodies as well. But first guys, real quick, uh, if you use the Whatnot app, be sure to check out Infinity Flux on Whatnot. They have at least three to four auctions every week. They have really cool theme shows, whether it's uh, silver and bronze age goodies, uh, new stuff action figure shows on Wednesdays. It's really cool. So if you use Whatnot and you want to find cool stuff to buy on there, check out Infinity Flex. They will be linked in the description below. So let's jump right in, starting with Marvel, starting with Ben Riley Spider-Man number five. Now this is the end of this mini series and it was pretty fun. Uh, this, I thought the end, the last issue was the end until the end of the issue and then got to this one. And uh, yeah, I like this uh, pretty well. This again takes place at whatever time period the comics where Ben Riley was Spider-Man in the 90s took place, um, this falls in that same continuity. And uh, this one was fun because this one featured like a, a big breakout at, at Ravencroft, I think it was Ravencroft. And uh, it was Ben Riley Spider-Man against a bunch of different villains. That was pretty fun. Uh, the ending kind of fizzled out. It was, it was one of those where, oh, we defeated the main villain by appealing to his, you know, his heart of gold or whatever. And... That's not always fun. I just want to see the bad guy, you know, beat the, or I want to see the good guy beat the bad guy, but that, you know, that sort of happened in this. But it was still a really fun miniseries. I, I would love to have more with Ben Riley as Spider-Man, especially considering, you know, his status quo now. But um, at the end of this, there was a little bit of tease, I guess, for another Spider-Man miniseries coming out uh, fairly soon. But I don't know if it's going to be Ben Riley or Peter Parker or who it's going to be. But uh, yeah, if it's as fun as this one, then I may have to check it out. Up next is one that I've been looking forward to for quite a while. It's Captain America Sentinel of Liberty number one. So this, uh, you know, we got the um, the Sam Wilson Captain America, I can't, Symbol of Freedom, I think is what his is called. I can't remember the subtitles. I just know him as the Sam Wilson Cat Book and the Steve Rogers Cat Book. So the Sam Wilson book, it's already come out, um, the first issue anyway, and it was really fun. This one was interesting too. Uh, it was a lot of setup for a larger story to come. We do get introduced, I guess it's a new villain or maybe a new person under the identity of a, of a former villain. I wasn't quite sure on that. But um, there, the, the whole story is there's some mysteries around Cap Shield. And there's a cool little thing in here about it's not your symbol, it's theirs. Well, who is they? Who's, whose symbol is it if it's not Cap's and why isn't it his and why is it theirs and that kind of thing. Um, we get a little bit of uh, Winter Soldier action in this, teaming up with Captain America as well, kind of harking back a little bit to the super awesome Ed Brubaker run, which I love. I've got all of them uh, back here. Um, so yeah, this was interesting. Again, it was a little bit of setup though. We, things didn't really get moving until probably the second half of the issue. It was establishing Steve Rogers his new, I don't know, it's not really a new status quo, but him, you know, living in an apartment, just trying to make a life for himself outside of superheroics and Avengers and things like that. So I'm very excited to see what's coming next. Oh, and I forgot, I got the uh, the A cover, but uh, then I had to get the awesome Scotty Young cover too, because that cover is too cool not to get. I try not to get more than one cover for a book, but come on, that's that, you have to get this. Next is Fantastic Four, number 44. A uh, nice uh, scroll variant. So this is the, um, I don't know if this is the last part of the Reckoning War. I mean, the next issue deals with it too, but it, the, the little blurb at the end made it sound like next issue is more of an epilogue. But the end of this one, you know, there's, it was a cliffhanger. So I, I guess the, the next issue is the, is the end technically. And of course the blurb too said, you know, you, you gotta read it to see how this affects the Marvel Universe kind of thing. 
Anyway, this issue was, this whole Reckoning War story has been fine. Uh, not as awesome as I wanted it to be, I guess. There's just so many, in this one there's like five different things going on at once and they do all converge uh, near the end, but you've got, you know, Sue doing her thing with Uatu, you've got Reed and Ben and She-Hulk doing their thing, you've got Johnny doing his thing with a bunch of other like cosmic heroes and then you've got Doctor Doom doing his different thing and it's a lot to keep up with. Uh, some of those plot, uh, subplots are more interesting than others. Um, again, it did converge at the end pretty, pretty nicely, but um, yeah, I'm not super upset for this storyline to be over, but um, I would, I maybe wouldn't mind reading it again all together one day, or if you're waiting on reading it, it'll probably make a really good trade. Next is Iron Fist number four, the scroll variant. So I did not get a chance to read this one before recording this video, but uh, this miniseries so far has been pretty decently. I don't have a super close connection to Lin Lai or Lin Lee. I, I hate that I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't have a super close connection to him. I never read any of the Swordmaster issues. He seems like he'll be really cool as Iron Fist, but again, it's one of those things where new hero has to learn, you know, his new powers and that kind of, that, that whole spiel. Like, I just want to get to where he's a really good Iron Fist because I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, I think this is a five-issue miniseries. I might be wrong, so um, I guess one more to go. But uh, yeah, I'm going to finish it out and see how it turns out. Iron Man number 20, just another awesome Alex Ross cover. I think I have all the Alex Ross covers, and they're just the A covers. But I'm super far behind on the series though, so I think I haven't read past the first maybe like six issues and I've already forgotten what happened. So this is just gonna go in the stack and I'm gonna catch up at some point. Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood number two. So I did not get the chance to read this one either, but this cover is awesome. So I did read the first one a day or two after my last video, or after a day or two after the last one came out and I made the video about it. Uh, and it was really cool. Um, three, three or four stories in, I think there was three different stories. Um, and I expect this one to be just as good. Next is Spider-Man 2099 Exodus number two. And this is crazy for me to say about a Spider-Man book, but I did not have a chance to read this one either. The, the first one, uh, the first issue was pretty interesting, but I don't really know why it had the title of Spider-Man on it. Like this really should just be called like 2099 Exodus and it should be a mini series about the different characters they're introducing into the 2099 universe. Cause the last issue was all about Winter Soldier 2099 and Spider-Man was barely in it. So that's okay because they seem to be building to an interesting story, but I just don't know why it's Spider-Man. But this one introduces Loki 2099, which is kind of weird because Loki's a god and he should just be the same Loki, but maybe he's not. I don't know. If I'd read it, I'd be able to tell you, but I didn't, so I can't. But I am very excited to catch up. And last for Marvel is What If Miles Morales Became Thor. Uh, this is What If Miles Morales number four. I did not get a chance to read this one either. The first three have been pretty cool. The last issue, What If Miles Morales Became the Hulk, wasn't my, I, I didn't think it was, it wasn't my favorite, I guess I should say, because he didn't really do anything. It was about how he became Hulk, but then like a little two page fight at the end, we didn't really get to see him do anything. So hopefully this is not the same as that. Um, I am interested in how Miles Morales gets the power of Thor. And hopefully we'll see that, but hopefully we'll get to see him in action a little bit too. As for DC, it was a really light DC week this week, but I'll still go through them here. Uh, Future State, Gotham number 14. Still haven't read any of this series. And actually I've decided in an effort to just simply cut down on the amount of books I'm buying, I'm gonna hop off this just because I'm so far behind. By the time I catch up, they'll be way past this. I can read in Trades or DC Universe Infinite. So again, uh, I flipped through several and the black and white manga style artwork seems really, really cool but um, I just don't really know what the story is. Next up is I Am Batman number 10. Just like Future State Gotham, I haven't read any of these yet. Just like Future State Gotham, I've decided to hop off this book as well just because I'm so far behind and there's no sense in me buying all these books if I'm not reading them at the time. So I'm gonna hop off this. I really wanna read about Jace Fox as Batman. I I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that um, we're getting so much of him as Batman in current DC Universe. I thought that was gonna be more of a future state thing, but he's sticking around. Um, I'm really interested to see somebody take up the mantle of Batman while Batman is still Batman. So I want to read more of his stories. I'm just so far behind. I, I've just got to, you know, hop off for now and then catch up later. And then last from DC, I told you it was a light week, a Superman Son of Kal-El number 12. I did read this one yesterday and I really enjoyed it. We're still uh, continuing on the, the rising storyline. Um, you know, Bendix is creating superhumans that he can essentially remote control. He's trying to um, 
I guess, uh, stain the public's view and opinion of John Kent. Um, this one is nice because John Kent is, it finally kind of takes the fight to Bendix. He's sort of going on the offensive a little bit, which is nice. We get, uh, I, I think in this issue, I probably like Jay Nakamura best in this issue that I have of anything so far, because he kind of goes on the offensive too, and he uses his abilities in a really cool way. Um, so I want to see, and, and the thing that happened at the end of this issue, I want to see how that turns out. So I'm still digging the storyline. I don't necessarily love the art sometimes, um, which can sort of take me out of the story. But as far as the story itself and what they're trying to tell, I'm really digging it. I've got several Image and other indie books this week, starting with Image and Do a Powerbomb, number one. I hate saying this. You guys know what I'm going to say. I have not had a chance to read this, and I don't remember what it's about. So I know it sounded cool when I pre-ordered it, and I'm sure it's going to be cool when I read it. I just cannot for the life of me remember. So um, yeah, I'm going to read it here in the next day or two and uh, circle back. One that I did just finish reading, and it's one of my favorites already, is 8 Billion Genies number two. I loved the first one, and I love this one. Uh, again, it, it, the, the premise of this book is every single person on Earth gets their own genie, that little floating blue guy that grants them one wish, one and only one wish. And, um, you know, what does everybody do with that? How does that affect the world, and how does that affect the population, and things like that? Um, but at the center of that story is the story of this bar and the owner of the bar, his wish last issue was, I wish that no other wish would affect this bar or anyone in it. And we see the effects of that. You know, the, the world is basically going into chaos, not necessarily an apocalypse or anything, but just, it's just literal craziness outside, but the bar and everyone in it are safe and there's different people in the bar making their own wishes and then so they have their own little stories going on inside this bar which is inside this larger world it's really interesting um and and, and what's nice about this issue is the genies kind of talk about um the rules a little bit more or maybe not the rules but sort of the logistics that they have to go through to grant these wishes so all of that stuff was really interesting i am loving this you guys know that i have been um, trying to uh, stop buying so many indie books because I really like reading most of those stories as trades. But this one is so good, I definitely cannot wait for trade and I have to get it every week. Next is King Spawn number 11. Still haven't read any Spawn. This is going to go on the Spawn stack. Cool cover. I'm sure the art is in inside is cool and the story is probably cool as well. I just have to sit down and catch up. Next is Radiant Black number 15. I love this cool, you know, choose your fighter screen. I have not had a chance to read this one yet, but I love the Radiant Black series and I'm sure I'm gonna love this issue. So that's all for Image, but I got a couple of other indie books here as well. Uh, the first one I did not pre-order, um, but the fine folks in my LCS are so good at making everything sound awesome. And then this one sounded super duper awesome. I had to go ahead and get it. This is a Calculated Man uh, number one from Aftershock. I'm not sure if this is a mini series or an ongoing. It's probably a mini series, but if it's an ongoing, that would be cool too. So this is about this guy here named Jack Beans. He is an accountant for the mob, but he is like an nth level math genius. Has They explain it, um, his, the way his brain works. He's got this, this memory that he can remember everything about everything. So where he was on a certain day, everything around him at a certain time, what he was wearing, what everybody else was wearing, that kind of thing. Um, it's not like godlike, you know, omnipotent knowledge. It's only stuff that he himself has experienced. He just has a super duper good memory. And then on top of that, Matt, they, they say that he sees math in colors and he sees the world as mathematics and that kind of thing. So a person with that kind of brain is actually in the witness protection program from the mob. They find him and he realizes that the only way to stay safe is to kill everybody in the mob himself. And, you know, he uses his his giant brain power to accomplish that. So obviously, you know, it's there's a lot of members of the mob that he was in. So it doesn't all wrap up in this issue, but uh, this was really fun. This was, um, this issue that I noticed, it was very wordy. Like it took me a long while to read it. That's not a bad thing though. It was just establishing the, the world. It was setting him up as a character, showing him uh, a little bit of his time when he was with the mob talking a little bit about why he got out, that kind of stuff. 
So this was a really, really interesting book. I'm on the fence about whether to get it monthly or not because it will read very, very well as a trade. But it's also really interesting and I don't want to wait. So I don't know if I'll get it every month or just wait for a trade. But uh, if you just want a good, like a different kind of story, um, you know, he's not a violent man. Um, he's not even crazy or psychotic or anything. He's very even keeled, a very normal dude. He's just like a genius level. He's got a genius level brain. And how does he use that to take on the mob? Uh, I can't wait to find out. And then last of the single issues this week is Grim number two. And I cannot believe that this cover is just a regular variant. It's not an incentive or anything. This is a cardstock, glossy, foil, virgin cover. And it's not an incentive. Like you can just like pick this up off a shelf. So uh, the first Grim was awesome. Um, this girl is a, uh, I can't remember her name. Shoot, it just escaped me. I just, I just lost it. Um, but she is a reaper. She, she is in charge of delivering uh you know souls after a person has died she's in charge of delivering their soul to wherever they need to be last issue she had last issue she had her side stolen she got it back but there's a mystery around her because she cannot remember how she died everybody else who's ever died can remember she can't remember she concocts a plot in this issue to go about remembering how she died and we do see that but then something happens at the end so there may be more to it than what we see I'm not really sure, but um, it's really interesting. Like this is another one where this would probably read really well in trade, but it's also super compelling and I don't want to wait. So especially with these awesome covers, I may just have to get every issue from here on out. But the fun doesn't stop there. I got a few extra goodies as well, starting with uh, the Chicken Devil trade paperback. So this is from Aftershock as well. Um, this sounded interesting when the series came out, but it's one of those where I thought that's going to be a really good trade. And here it is. So. Um, I don't really know the premise too much. There, there's a guy that, that owns a, um, co-owns a chain of chicken restaurants, like fried chicken restaurants, and like Memphis hot chicken restaurants is, is what it says. He finds out that his business partner owes money to the mob, and he's not equipped to deal with that kind of thing. But, you know, it says, it says, uh, he's ill-equipped to be a badass. He's just a guy who makes really good chicken. Can he protect his family from cold-blooded blood gangsters? Absolutely not but maybe the chicken devil can. So basically your mild mannered chicken restaurant owner turned mob hitman or mob takedown guy, you know, that old chestnut. So it sounds really fun. Um, the art is really colorful and looks really fun. So I think this is gonna be a really fun read and I'm glad I waited for the trade. So next up from Boom is a book called Dark Blood. So I read the first issue of this back when it came out and it was really interesting and I wanted to wait for the trade. Uh, this uh, features a, uh, a man named Avery Aldridge, that's this guy here. Uh, this takes place in 1955 in Alabama, and he is a black man. So, you know, we were way less progressive back then, unfortunately, than we are today. Of course, we still have a long way to go, even today. But, you know, Alabama, you know, Deep South, I'm in the Deep South too, so I can say that, um, you know, it, it wasn't the best place or time for, for people of color. On top of that, he develops abilities. So that's, you know, that's another layer to this story. So, you know, Alabama 1955, you can just imagine there's already people out to get him. And then now that he's got abilities, probably even more so. Um, he was a, he's a war hero in World War II. And um, this book sort of take, flashes back between that and, you know, 1955 Alabama, uh, which is present day for this book. and. You know, sort of. How does he? How does he survive this all? How does he protect his family? How did he get his powers? That kind of thing. Uh, according to the to the back matter here, he says there's a there's a doctor with mysterious intentions. So what's that all about? Um, again, the first issue was really interesting. Uh, it, it it introduced a really good mystery because he doesn't know how he got these abilities, at least in the first issue. And I guess we're going to find out. But uh, yeah, I just really wanted to read this uh, from the first issue. It was awesome, and I wanted to see the rest of it. So this book is one that I've actually never heard of. This was a complete impulse buy. There, there, was a, there were a few of them sitting on the counter as I was checking out. I thought, that sounds interesting. I will check that out. So this is called, this is from Image Comics called The Passageway. This is a hardcover. This is written by Jeff Lemire. And I don't really know much about this. Um, but what intrigued me about it is, is it says, this is the first book in a bold and ambitious new shared horror universe. I love horror comics. Um, and if this is going to be part of a horror a comic universe, then absolutely. When a geologist is sent to a remote lighthouse to investigate strange phenomena, 
He finds a seemingly endless pit in the rocks, but what lurks within and how will he escape its pull? That sounds really cool. I'm sorry to just read straight off of the back cover, but again, I had never heard of this one before today, but uh, it sounded really interesting. And Jeff Lemire is a great writer and I wanted to check it out. And last but not least, uh, this one's kind of a cheat because I didn't get it today. I got it this past Saturday when I went to my LCS, they were having a big sidewalk sale. And I figured while I was there, I would grab this because they were holding on to it for me from a couple of weeks ago. If I hadn't gone Saturday, I would have gotten it today anyway. So all that said, it's another big boy book. This is The Death of Superman Omnibus. So I don't really know why I need this because I have a couple old printings of The Death of Superman right over there somewhere. And then I have a really nice trade, collect, uh, trade paperback set as well. But I just couldn't pass up getting this whole thing in one big book. This may be, this is a lot thicker than those. So this might have a lot more in it. I'm not really sure. But yeah, I just, um, you know, that this is, this is a story from my childhood. I really enjoy this whole storyline with, you know, the, the death of Superman, funeral for a friend, reign of the Superman, Superman returns and the Superman doomsday hunter prey stuff. It's all really cool. So I just had to get it in this giant, really big, it's one of the big DC, you know, DC, They'll just throw a bazillion issues in a book. They don't even care. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to, I'm not even gonna read everything it collects on the back, but yeah, I was super happy to get this one. And that's it guys. That's another super awesome haul with a lot of really good stuff that I either did read or need to read. Uh, guys, I appreciate you watching. If you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a sarcastic thumbs up. And if nothing else, leave me a comment below and let me know what you picked up this week. Did you get the Death of Superman? Did you get any cool trades? Uh, did you get the super awesome, non-incentive, grim, super foil, glossy, cardstock, virgin cover? Whatever you got, just uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you picked up. Uh, I love comic books. I could talk about them with a room full of people or just to a camera. Guys, don't forget, comic books are supposed to be fun. They're just another fun form of storytelling. The stories are fun. The art is interesting. The vast majority of comic books are all fake and made up anyway, so there is a ton of stuff out there. It's super easy to look through and find something that you like and just disregard everything else and let everybody else enjoy that stuff. Also, don't forget, it doesn't matter how much you buy each week or each month. What makes a great comic book haul is that the things you get get you super jazzed to read comics, uh, sit down, crack open a book, um, whether it's one book, 10 books, 100 books, it doesn't matter how many there are, just as long as the things you get mean a lot to you. So guys, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.